G'day guys, we're down here at On Track 4x4 down here in Melbourne. We've got the car in here, we've done some extremely exciting modifications. Out of all the mods we've done to this car, I think this has to be the one we're most excited about and what has made the absolute most difference to this car. Again, I don't know if you like to say it, but just like a 79 series, I think it's going to be an absolute game changer. So let's get inside there, take a bit of a look, let's get into it. Alright, right here in the On Track's uh, brand new workshop and you can see that uh, the nice shiny floor and he looks absolutely sick in here. Uh, if you haven't seen this pretty uh, pretty face himself, this is uh, Andrews, the man uh, pretty much responsible for most of this uh, stuff we do, these Y6G patrols out on the tracks and, and, and then touring, touring Australia. So, what we've got behind here, Andrews, you need to give us a bit more of the, of the technical stuff. Um, this is massively exciting. This is something I know a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time and sort of a lot of people didn't want to touch these things because of, you know, the hydraulic suspension and a few people were kind of scared of it, I think, but I never really thought it was going to happen. But here we are. So we've got Andrew in here to sort of explain a little bit, mate, like what, I guess sort of, uh, like, what is this? What, is, what, well, what have we got in here? Basically, Josh, it's, it's a full airbag replacement. <laughs> um, the AAA suspension have, have been able to produce. Yep. Um, we've sort of given them a hand with different scenarios and, and what the different situations that people are getting their hands yep. um, into. Yep. Um, so we can make that whole airbag system uh, work with basically both our billet arm mm -hmm. um, and w with the factory arm. So it can go yep. in, in any situation for, for a customer. Yeah, so. awesome. I guess like, I guess sort of what's the reason of, of why, like why would you want to go to this rather than just your, your coil and airbag? I guess like what's the main sort of, like why, why would we want to do this? Well, height is probably the biggest issue and, yep. and obviously, People are towing bigger things all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a new van. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything's changing all the time. You know, yep. people want more things. People want different things, and and you know, yep. so people are, tend to be going heavier in coils, which has its side effects in that. Yep, so, um, bigger spring rates, more height, and then you, you change those things, and then the, you you lose. The, mm -hmm. the fabulous ride quality that, exactly. the, that the patrol the has, for. Yeah. you know, so um, yeah. having an, an airbag allows us to control that height of the vehicle mm -hmm. um, and also allows us um, to keep wheel alignments in spec yeah. because you're not having to raise it. It'll, yeah. ha it'll carry load a lot better and yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It, ride qualities there yeah exactly and we're going to go into that more later but just from we have been driving this thing already and that's the first thing we notice is just everything was quieter inside like not that we had that many rattles anyway but just like the little things you did here yep. they're gone so it's just that that much more i guess sort of a little bit softer ride but by keeping it firm at the same time if that if that, if, if that even makes sense but um i guess i guess the one question is going to be is like you know being an airbag i guess people can freak out of you know i'm on the gibby river road and you know i, I blow a bag i think you know, even going to, by feeling these things and seeing inside, you're not. If you throw a samurai sword out, I don't get actually going to even put a hole in it. But it's, a, it's a fairly <laughs> thick bag. But yeah, I know, don't think uh, the bag's going to be the issue. But heavily I know you've done some stuff with the. Air, uh, the main thing is probably going to be the airlines, like near exhaust and stuff, can yep. get hot. So what have we sort of done there? Yep. I know. So we, we've included braided airlines. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. For for a meter, basically. Yeah. Um, and then the rest goes to you, to your air system. Now, for the guys that have. Um, already got internal air systems inside their car. It's as simple as plumbing straight onto that. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah. If, for instance, something was to fail, fail and it was to let let go or let down, the idea it, it still works in conjunction with all the factory components, yep. and the car will just sit on the bump stops. Yeah, awesome. And I guess that's thing having the nice big uh, wheel wells as well. These things can sit on the bump stops and travel well. I know with some of the yeah. the crews and that, you sort of you can't do that having, having it down. So I guess that's a yeah, you can cruise on into a uh, into a spot, but I think that's going to be very, very, very uh, rare that we're going to see yeah. that. <laughs> and, and look, even in the sense of if you were to puncture a bag, yeah, um, you, you'd push in tire inflation kit, exactly, uh, your yeah. repair kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you will be able to you'll, you'll be able to put a plug in it. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So I guess I mean I guess what's the what's the cost of this system? Just to, so uh, as a basic system, yeah, you're looking at twenty two hundred dollars, and that includes a base plate. Yep. Um, which will and any little other components to go onto the standard arm. Yeah. Um, base plate, bolts, bags, um, and some airlines. Yeah. Awesome. And is this something that people can buy uh, if you're in 
Queensland, a, a shop up there, they can buy this kit and store it for people yep. up there. Yep, yep. Happy, so, to, happy to ship that yep. out. Your local mechanic can yeah. do that. Yep. Yeah, and it's it's not a hard fit. Is it? Yeah, so it's not. To, it's pretty much just a, a, a bolting kit, really. Pretty much. It, yeah. looks, uh, it looks pretty straightforward there. Yep. Simple and easy. Yep. All right, we're about 500 k's into about a 650 k trip uh, from Melbourne back to Majura. So there's a there's a fair bit of stuff along the highway. Sort of get a little bit of everything along there. Uh, just sort of your real sort of, I guess, smallest sort of real, uh, little choppy choppy bumps. I guess I'm making it sound like a, mo a motocross track, but uh, yeah, your short little bumps. And some uh, if you have driven near Sea Lake and that, uh, you really get your big sort of uh, big sort of big sort of whoops. You can get uh, your little uh, big bumps and that uh, through there. Which I guess I want to say like before. Like the coil, the coil setup and the airbags was honestly really good. Like I don't want to make it sound like that it's uh absolutely no good at all. I get to tell you obviously, I always thought it was good, not perfect, but you know it just sort of is what it is. Especially when you got uh, heavier springs and a modified vehicle, uh, you know you're never going to expect it to be uh, you know like a, exactly like it was when it was brand new. But um, I guess now, like I guess it's not until you sort of experience something uh, better until you really sort of notice that. And I think that's pretty much exactly what covers this. So I think to sort of explain it the best, it just feels so much more uh, stable. It just feels so much more uh, just planted uh, over those over those sort of the, the big bumps where I sort of, we're, we're towing the caravan here. Again, uh, this, is more, but this is the sort of towing, first sort of long towing test we've done. So we're pretty much 350, 345, 350 uh, kilos on the ball, uh, depending how much water in that we've got in there in the water tanks there so again quite heavy on the ball so what i've got uh, i've got about 90 psi in one bag and 80 in the other so that sort of got me pretty level did a, a bit of a tape measure uh le level at the rear there my right side's always a little bit lower than the left uh, i find the hbmc sometimes it can be your measurements can be always a little bit a little bit different i don't know if get the shocks get a little bit sort of uh sticky but they can always be you know that five ten mil a little bit different so don't stress out if you are trying to get it you know to the absolute mill uh every single time when you're doing it so because i've got the um you know i probably weigh oh, i weigh a bit more than michaela so I'm, I'm on this side of the car uh my spare wheel my 35 inch tires on this side of the car as well so i've always just need that little bit more uh on this side so i uh, did start off at 80 uh up to 90 uh, i've also tried at 100 uh, just to sort of just to sort of find that happy medium, just sort of see what it would really do. Obviously, the firmer you go, it's pretty much like you're just adding a, a stiffer, stiffer uh, spring every time you, you're going up. So, I found out that 80, 90 psi has been absolutely perfect for this. Obviously, again, depending on your setup, how much gear you got in the back, uh, if your table weight's 250, 300 kilos or something, uh, you better run even probably around that. 70 75 maybe uh it's going to be even smoother again again obviously the more air the more firm uh the more firm it's going to get so these bags are actually good uh for up to like a thousand psi so there's no way you're going to be uh with the old ones you know you sort of get to obviously a totally different system sort of get to that 60 psi and that's sort of that's your max and you, you know you really uh the bags have really got a lot of pressure on them so the main thing we sort of notice again is on the on those big the big bumps and that uh, I didn't have that floaty, uh, boaty kind of feeling. Like sometimes you sort of, you sort of hit it, and you know you sort of, sort of go bang, 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 and then sort of, then sort of settle in. Uh, but what I sort of find now is the bump sort of comes up. It'll sort of take it, and then it's back to just normal. So just that sort of, if, if that sort of makes sense. So it really sort of stopped that uh, that floaty feeling, which is sometimes make you feel a little bit uh, wandery on the road uh, when towing. I guess the other thing is again, it's your, your smaller kind of bumps. Again, depending on what sort of uh, air pressure and stuff you run in the tires, we run mud tires, so uh, firmer sidewall and that as well. So again, that is going to that is going to make a fair bit of difference as well to how sort of uh, rough and firm uh, your, your pressure your ride is going to be. We've done 32,000 k's in the, on this exact same uh, setup, just with the coils and that. So same pressures and all that stuff. We're sort of around that 45, 46 cold, which puts up to about that 50 psi. Uh, warm just to give you just to give you an example so again around the corners that don't have bumps that do have bumps again it just feels firm it literally feels like the caravan uh isn't there sometimes you sort of got the the rear would get like a little bit sort of a little bit sort of sway in the rear uh i, I used to find which can sometimes make you a little feel a bit uncomfortable at uh, you know 100ks around the corner uh or something uh again it's just that firmness and this that stability is just really really what i'm noticing and just smoothness along here it's just i'm on a pretty pretty flat spot at the moment uh but it's just everything is just smooth planted uh and in control that's probably the that's probably the absolute best way i can tell uh towing along the highway but just 
so far just when I got out before we sort of stopped in for a bit of smoke over there and just having a look at it everything is just just sitting level sitting perfect riding perfect this is just again it's just been an absolute game changer uh, for towing caravans and these Y62 patrols all right, so I want to do a little bit of a hookup test. I want to actually sort of see how much this actually sags down. Uh, we've got the got the bags here at about 62, 63. I messed around yesterday, finally had some dead flat ground here. So I found about that 855 to 860 in the rear. Just gave me that just that slight five, sort of five, 10 mil rake in the rear of the car. Uh, so it was sitting absolutely perfect for this setup. Again, at the moment, the only pain in the ass to the setup is we don't have an auto level set, uh, auto level kit for this. So this is obviously early days at the start. By the time this video probably comes out, it's probably gonna be available. So the only, I'm just using the tape measure. Again, I'm really anal trying to get it to that exact, uh, exact height each side. Cause it is a bit softer. Uh, you only need to slice a little bit of angle, which we are at the moment here in the backyard. And it has dropped down a little bit. So. I'm just doing a measure from the bottom of the, uh, the the lip of the rim at the bottom uh, to the guard. So I'm sitting about 840 at the moment. So I'm going to hook the van on here, uh, put it down. We usually have about a 345 to 350 kilo ball weight. Usually have the dirt bike on the front here. So we did have, originally have uh, 400 kilo springs uh, with the airbag van airbags in there uh, at about that 55, 60 psi. And the car still just sat that little bit, a uh, little bit low on the rear. So that's when we sort of. Looking for a different option. I didn't want to go too much, uh, a stiffer spring again. The rear just would have started to, you know, uh, jeopardize in that ride and that. But at the moment, we're just parked up at my parents' house here. Don't have the bike on at the moment. So it's going to, you know, it's usually a little bit at uh, that touch heavier. Uh, but again, I just want to sort of see exactly how much is going to drop. All right, so we've got the full weight of the caravan on there now. So it, it, it dropped it dropped a fair bit. I'm gonna let's do a quick measurement. We're looking at what's that eight? About eight fifteen. Yeah, we're looking at about looking about eight eight fifteen there. So what's that? It's a good sort of twenty five mil. So I reckon that's actually nearly the same. Uh, as what my, what they originally dropped down with with our other setup. So now we'll uh, we'll chuck some air in it and uh, see how much piece I've got to get it up back up to that eight forty. So depending on your setup, you're gonna have a few different ways of sorry, how you can air this, uh, air the airbag system up. So for us at this stage, we just literally use the exact same kit that we already had in there for our previous airbags. Everything's all run. We've got the airbag man, uh, wireless control at the front, the two little digital readings, wireless control. I've also got a backup here in the back that I can uh, plug into my air compressor here. And I've got two uh, manual valves uh, in the back here, just in case something was to fail with the uh, with the other setup there. So, for example, here now I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna plug it on here. I know a lot of people; it's probably more of a common setup. Uh, some people have their valves down, uh, you know, back down near the toe uh, toe hitch or their toe plug or something. Uh, but there is going to be some different setups out there uh, in control. Um, so in dash, like little displays and that on there, uh, that is going to be coming uh, very soon uh, with the kit. But for this example, we're going to run with what we got. There's no point ripping it all out because it's already plumbed and, and ready to go. We've got the two airbag man compressors in here. I do find doing it this way, it does uh, it does uh, go up a little bit quicker than the wireless. The wireless one can be a little bit slow. Even my other rear bag uh, airbags in the back can be that little bit slower. Uh, this is definitely a quicker way uh, to pump it up. So let's uh, see what PSI we have to get up. It's currently sitting at about uh, 60 PSI. All right, so I pumped it up. So that's sitting at about a 73 PSI. So just the other week uh, when we were towing home, we had the bike and all that stuff on. Probably a bit more water than that. We're about that 80 PSI uh, and we'll sit in good. So I'm just going to triple check it now from the bottom. Yeah, so I'm, I'm bang on bang on 840 mil, which is where I started. So it's sitting at that ultimate, uh, the same ride height. Again, that's when, you, uh, when the car's just by itself, not towing. That's where you're going to set your wheel alignment. Uh, that's where a lot of we see a lot of people, you know, scrubbing out tires and sort of stuff like that. Is just by sitting too low in the rear, you're going to change that sort of that wheel angle at the back. Uh, especially doing the long K's and that, especially on you know even corrugated roads, highways, anything is when you're going to be uh, scrubbing your tires out. So again, everyone's measurements on it's going to be different. Everyone's setups different, but let's for example, you can pump these things up to like a thousand psi. Like I know people are going to be sort of obviously wanting to know that you know what's the durability of the bag and what if you pop a bag and all that stuff. On the, on the Lotus Caravan there, we've had the Cruise Master ATX stuff for nearly three years now. A lot of outback roads, across sticks, everything. Uh, we've never had an issue. I'm not saying you, you, you couldn't. Uh, again, like I said, what Andrew says, the worst comes the worst. You could change a bag over, take a spare bag if you're, you know, if you're really cautious. Worst comes to worst, we can drop this thing on its ass and dry, drive on the bump stops if you had to. But quick example, I just want to sort of see how high this thing can go. I'm just going to pump it up to a, a 100 psi and just see how much more it lifts up. 
All right, so let's put this uh, just this left bag here up to 100 psi. So you actually can actually do have a little valve under here on my air tank at the back. So you can control the bags independently, or you can switch that valve there, and you can uh, and both airbags are going to go up and down at the same time. So depending on what you want to do, I've sort of run them independently. I do each bag again. Everyone's setup's different again, you know, I'm a bit heavier than the car like we explained before So that, the spare tire, the drawers, this way our car's set up that we do have that little bit more uh, weight on the rear side So I do usually need that 5-10 psi more uh, just to sort of even out, which is perfect So 100 psi here and again, I don't know, the ball weight on this at the moment is probably about, I don't know, 280 or, or something like that Again, I don't have scales in here without the bike The bike adds about sort of 55-60 kilos last time we weighed it uh, on the ball so again we've gone up here so i just want to see this measurement just for a bit of fun that's at 870 875 so that's an extra 35 mil more uh height clearance we've got uh in the background there so again if you're running those heavy ball weights lighter ball weights obviously the more pressure you're going to put in the bag this is going to firm the rider uh but if it's if, it, if it's got to be done this, this is just one of the biggest things that Tony is just no matter what load you've got on, uh, you're going to be sitting absolutely level. All right, so another handy thing when you plant the campsites or caravan park or whatever, usually we have to sort of, we've got to plank wood under here we are on, are on some soft grass, but usually because this car does sit pretty high, we've got to sort of put some planks of wood up, really jack the van up so it's sitting really nice high to be able to get the car out. So a good uh, a good benefit here is again, if we've already shown this, if you are on a sort of bit unlevel campground, if you're sort of a little bit nose down like that, we can literally just drop the bags. Just like that, that's all done. Now we can drive away, get get out, get under from underneath the hitch, pump the car back up, and we're good to go. All right, yes, of course, with it being full air, you can do silly stuff like this, like there's dropping it on its guts. This, how good is this? It's literally tucking 35s. Who would have thought we'd see Y62 patrols doing this? Obviously, it's not gonna be ideal having it like this and just cutting manies all the time, but it can definitely be done. It just literally tucks that wheel under that guard. So obviously let all the pressure out here, but this does just show how much the bag does uh, does level out and this is going to be going to be really interesting uh, off-road of getting that uh, that rear wheel tuck so of course again if you want to you know obviously not have to go this low but even just a little bit low if you've got a fridge in the back or something uh, sometimes Michael has to use the steps when we do pull up the camp we can just sort of have that bag just sit down a bit more easy accessible uh, all that there again as you saw taking the van that off get access even to the roof like I could literally grab the bloody I could literally grab the max tracks off from there, no dramas off off the off the roof rack, which is which is absolutely sick. So again, obviously it's not ideal for having this and driving on the highway like this, but again, it can be done. These are 325 uh, by 65 18 tires, so they are very wide tire. Still fits under there. So again, if you did have to drive away like this, uh, you can if you need to. Something I'm pretty curious on is to see how much uh, how much travel from as absolutely as low as we can go. We're going to jack it right up until it gets uh, sort of full length. I want to sort of see it uh, do a rough measurement. So again, I'm sticking to this one. It's just the most easiest measurement for me to do. So we're looking at about six, call it 660 there. So let's pump it up. We'll see what PSI it goes to to get a uh, full height uh, and see how much we get out of it. Cranked up to 110 psi. So obviously this is, uh, this is unloaded, no carry around the back here. Have a look at the friggin' height of this thing. You could fit bloody 40 inch tires in there. So don't get any bloody stupid ideas. But have a look at this. I'm gonna do a quick, uh, a quick measurement just to get an idea of the travel. So I'm at, that's 925. So what's that's about uh, roughly 
265 mil. If I did get that wrong, I will correct that there. That, that's about 265 mil uh, from the bottom uh, to the hot, to, to the top. So what I might do now, I might even just, um, I'm, again, <laughs> I'm trying to do so much different stuff now. I might even drop it down to my uh, ultimate level from my, where my ride height is. And then from there, maybe see how much we got uh, from the, uh, to full extension or maybe uh, to the bottom there. But again, that is massive. Not that you would need much sort of, uh, used to have it jacked up as again it's going to throw sort of everything everything out of whack there but maybe if you're going down a steep obviously go on the track or something maybe you, you, even with your rear bar if you've got a standard rear bar if you really were in trouble big rock there or something you could even jack this up to sort of get out of that obstacle or something but that is so sick to see that that's got to be a freaking what six or seven inch lift or something it looks absolutely awesome <laughs> So again, our right height, ultimate right height for this setup, we're about that 860 mil uh, from the bottom of the rim there to the guard. So again, from the, our right height to the bottom is about that 200 mil, right height to the top is about that 65 mil. Not that that means massively, but as we did see in that off-road part there, it's more so when we're off-road, the bag's really gonna just bag out, do, 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 does what it does. It's gonna give us that massive wheel tuck, which is gonna be really beneficial off-road. Again, with the coil spring, Still great off-road, but again, it can only, especially if you had a run in 400 kilo springs, it's only sort of gonna to go to that certain point. And that's when we start sort of lifting wheels uh, at the front there. So again, guys, this is just, this is, this is early stage of this kit. We've got to start somewhere. So this is, I'm so absolutely, this has solved all our problems for towing, getting the car riding level, that extra off-road performance. Again, I just, so far, I cannot fault this thing. So again, we travel full time. We live, literally live in this thing. We're gonna be doing Cape York, all the corrugations, all the tough stuff. Again, if something does happen, you're gonna see it. There's no benef benefits of us hiding or not showing stuff. Again, we wanna make sure stuff's proven. It's gonna be very long-term for uh, so many people uh, out there. So if you do have any questions or query guys, again, reach out to the guys at OnTrack 4x4. Obviously, as more uh, mechanics and shops start getting a hold of this stuff, everyone's going to start knowing it. But so far, on track 4x4 and AAA suspension, they're the experts. They're the ones that have uh, created this kit. So any questions, we'll pop some details in the description below there. But again, guys, stay tuned. We are stoked of this thing. It's absolutely sick so far. As we go again, as we do a couple of months, we might do a bit of a six-month review or whatever. But just keep an eye out in those weekly episodes. Thanks for watching, guys.